Good morning, and I'd like to welcome members to the 14th meeting in 2018 of the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee. We have apologies this morning from David Torrance. Um, agenda item one is for the committee to agree that its consideration of its work programme should be taken in private at a future meeting. Do members agree to take this item in private? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Our second item today is for the committee to consider an application for the recognition from the proposed cross-party group on social enterprise. And I'd like to welcome Ben McPherson, MSP, to the meeting. Ben is the convener of the proposed group. And Ben, I'd like to invite you to make an opening statement about the purpose of the group. Thank you very much, convener. Very good morning, colleagues, and uh, thanks for your time this morning. I was approached by Social Enterprise Scotland uh, an, uh, a while ago to consider reconvening this uh, proposed cross-party group on social enterprise. I understand and, and, and know from uh, colleagues who were here during the, the last session of Parliament that this was a very successful cross-party group, a very well-attended cross-party group, and actually um, simply wasn't reconvened at the beginning of this session because those who, who headed it up um, were no longer members of, of the Scottish Parliament after the election. As a constituency MSP for Edinburgh, Northern and Leith, I work a lot with social enterprises in my constituency. There's a lot of very successful social enterprises operating out of my constituency. So I believe that is why I was uh, approached to, to set this up. And of course, working with Social Enterprise Scotland, I then reached out to colleagues and now have a diversity of colleagues, both as uh, vice conveners and uh, members of the, the cross-party group. Social enterprises, uh, of course, otherwise known as not-for-profit organisations, trade for the common good, strengthen our communities, work to improve people's life chances and help protect the environment. They empower communities and tackle social problems, are known for their high-quality goods and services, which reduce inequality, lift people out of poverty and create jobs, particularly for people who are at a disadvantage in the, the standard jobs market. There's definitely a, a trend in our society at the moment towards uh, greater numbers of social enterprises and greater numbers of people in business and with a social conscience starting these enterprises. And furthermore, consumers are increasingly seeking out socially responsible products, which is helping to, to drive that growth. The social enterprise movement, of course, is connected to the Fairer Scotland agenda, inclusive growth agenda, the real living wage movement, and uh, the Scottish Business Pledge, all of which are important to uh, all parties in, the, in this parliament. Currently, social enterprises contribute two billion to our economy each year and employ 80,000 people. That was the last census that was done in, in 2017. There are 5,600 social enterprises were identified during that census and 35% of these were located in rural areas. So I think it's important to emphasize that point that social enterprises are not just operating out of urban Scotland, but play a key part in, in rural Scotland and the rural economy. The, uh, importantly as well, I think it's uh, worth stating that, uh, absolutely worth stating and emphasising is that 64% of Scotland's social enterprises are led by women. So it's uh, absolutely a, a key sector in terms of making sure that we have an inc as inclusive economy as possible and that, that uh, drive in social enterprise growth is very much um, led by women. There's a lot more I could say, but I'm sure you've got questions around the, the, the strength of the social enterprise movement and uh, why it, it's important that it has this voice here in Parliament. In the submission to the committee, to the Parliament, I detailed what the, the CPG's purpose is, and just to, to re-emphasise, it's to help give social enterprises that strong, united voice here in the Parliament, in the centre of Scottish decision-making, uh, in order to influence policy-making both uh, with government, but also to raise awareness among all MSPs, the public and the media, to demonstrate the wide ranging social impacts of social enterprises and their contribution to the economy, and to, uh, to tell the inspiring stories about the human and environmental and social impact of, of social enterprises. Importantly also, the purpose of the cross-party group would be to be uh, to make sure that it has real purpose in promoting the growth and success of social enterprises in communities. Their role in delivering services or helping to uh, deliver and design 
public services and also to help boost even further the private sector use of social enterprise models. So in establishing this CPG, there's a determination to assist the sector which is growing and the benefits that it has to all communities of Scotland, but also work with other CPGs that have a, a, a related to the social enterprise movement or would benefit from collaboration as well. And there are a number that um, I've identified in the form and, and, and thereafter too. So I hope that gives a synopsis of the ambition, the purpose and the need and rationale behind why I think this would be a, a purposeful and positive CPG to re-establish here in the Scottish Parliament. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Ben. Um, do any of the committee have a question? Tom. Um, ben, uh, we've been two, we're now two years into Parliament. Why has it taken two years to re-establish something which you say is so success, success, successful? Well, I, I think that uh, is, a, is a good problem, a, a good question, Tom. Um, I was approached last year about re-establishing this group, so I don't know um, whether there were, there were efforts by Social Enterprise Scotland in the year before to identify other MSPs to take it forward. Um, however, it, I think I was at the AGM of Social Enterprise Scotland yesterday, and that I can assure you that there is strong ambition in the sector to re-establish this group and to have it here in the Parliament, and a, a recognition of what it gave to the sector in the previous session and, and a, an ambition to re-establish that. Some of the time that was taken as well was to make sure that there were MSPs from across parties that were engaged in this. And um, certainly if the group uh, w was uh, approved by, by the committee, I would also be seeking to recruit more MSPs to the group. Um, but the, 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 f the five MSPs that are currently signed up represent a good spread of not just political parties but the different aspects of our society in terms of rural and urban representation and also different backgrounds and, and different in interests in, in the economy and in innovation. And if I can follow on, what do you say to the comment that it might be social enterprises a general heading? Is it actually too wide to be effective in the end? Well. I think it's one of the challenges around social business in general is that in the UK it's just know this from from being a commercial solicitor before uh, being elected is uh, in terms of establishing social business models we're we're in a period where uh, that is something that's quite new to a lot of entrepreneurs um there's the new model of a community interest company that was established by the UK government a number of years ago and that's gaining some traction but I think the actual the breadth of the social enterprise term and uh, inclusive nature of it is about how do we utilize private generally private business activity for the common good and there's no in our economy and in company law there's no single way of doing that at the moment so yes you have community interest companies but also most of those operating in the social enterprise sector at the moment are private limited companies. And so, for example, I think it's important that they are included and acknowledged as being part of the inclusive uh, and being key to the inclusive growth agenda that this parliament is, is supportive of but, uh, and absolutely behind in, in my experience. But also it doesn't, Say, for example, I know there's a co cooperative CPG and that's very specific and there's a credit union CPG and cooperatives and, CP and, and credit unions, are many of which are social enterprises. However, without a social enterprise CPG, we're not able to encapsulate that wider private sector ambition and growth that there is in our economy and give them that voice and that ability to influence government and to uh, raise more awareness about what they're doing and increase the acceleration and momentum that there is in the sector at the moment. I mean, take Social Bite, which many of you will be aware of. The, 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 that is a social business established by uh, Limited by Guarantee. 
if if there is not a so social, int if, I know it's not one of the members at the moment, but it, 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 there's a possibility that it could be. But I'm using it as an example because it's well known. The if that wasn't, if they didn't have a CPG on social enterprise, then there's no place for that in terms of the CPGs that we have here in the Scottish Parliament at the moment. Thank you. Any other morning, Ben. Morning. Uh, morning. It was just a very quick one. Obviously, I see there's some organisations there that, that cover the Highlands and Highlands and Islands, but um, I'm sure you'll appreciate there are difficulties for the, particularly organisations on the islands to, to to travel down. So I was just wondering how you may be looking to encourage um, social enterprises uh, and those interested in them based in Scotland's islands to, to attend, to be involved, um, how you might facilitate that. A really important question, and in the census as well, it's, it notes that the, the Highlands and Islands are very significant in terms of the density of, of social enterprises located there. 21% uh, of Scotland's social enterprises are located in the Highlands and Islands, uh, with only 9% of the population. Um, so absolutely cognizant of that. The membership base in terms of uh, initial members of the CPG that uh, Social Enterprise Scotland have put forward, of course, includes New Start Highland, uh, and also um, others who, who, who are in the Highlands and Islands. I think we would need to be absolutely cognizant of how we would utilize technology, for example, in order to make sure that if, if those in the Highlands and Islands weren't able to attend in person, that they were absolutely able to uh, be part of the cross-party group inclusively in, uh, through uh, video conferencing, for example. So it would be worth kind of contacting to to see at ways that would look at ways that they could be involved should should the group get the go ahead. Absolutely. And I would make sure that the secretariat made that absolutely clear and and reached out to as many uh, social enterprises in the Highlands and Islands as possible, uh, particularly given the the figure that I just gave around how popular a, a model and how how many social enterprises are operating in the Highlands and Islands. Thank you. Very much. Eileen. Convener. Morning, Ben. I was just interested um, in the fact that you were saying there's a bit of a crossover with cooperative cross-party groups, the uh, credit unions, I think you also said maybe housing, CPG. And it was more a practical question because you talked about perhaps doing joint meetings, which would obviously make some sense. But you also say that the previous CPG was extremely successful with large numbers of attendees, around 50 to 80 at meetings. So that seems quite large to manage, also if you were then hoping to have joint meetings. Just in terms of the practicalities of that, do you think you'd maybe have to limit your numbers? Well, I appreciate that I wasn't um, here during the last uh, establishment of CPG, and, but I, th I think it's a really good question around how do we make sure that the membership is representative of the social enterprise movement and... and uh, those with an interest in growing the sector, but also make sure that the numbers at meetings doesn't become unwieldy and impractical. Um, so I know that Social Enterprise Scotland have been cognizant of that in, in the specific social enterprises that they've included in the membership so far. In terms of collaboration, I do think that I'm certainly keen to think about how the CPG would collaborate. I, I sit on housing and uh, credit union CPGs already, and how, given the momentum behind the inclusive growth agenda and how important that is to all of Scotland and how we develop our economy, is there an opportunity to bring those cross-party groups that are operating in that area together at some point during this session to have a uh, a joint meeting on inclusive growth and, and what we're all doing to advance that and what we can do together to, to affect policy change and, and make that representation to government. Um, I appreciate the committee rooms in this parliament probably aren't big enough for that, so we need to look at um, how uh, practically that would be uh, doable. But um, uh, uh, perhaps it would be a, a matter of delegation from each CPG and, and how we take that forward. Uh, if I may, convener, yeah, I did wonder if you were going to have to book the chamber. Um, <laughs> but actually, it, it does sort of raise another issue, which is more general around the fact that CPGs are supposed to be around informing members and they're not public meetings. And I think sometimes the lines get a little bit blurred around that with some CPGs. So would you be quite clear what the, the remit of yours would be? 
Well, absolutely, to, to make sure it's not just a, a good way of social enterprise Scotland getting people together for, for a discussion. To me, um, one of the aspects that I'm very clear about, both in my own CPG membership of current CPGs and the establishment of this one, is to make sure that it's very solution-focused around how we inform members and then use meetings as, as a mechanism to make sure that we are relaying messages to government, looking to affect policy, looking to reach out to uh, private sector if appropriate in this case. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ben, for coming along today. Um, the committee will consider whether to approve the application for recognition at agenda item three, and you'll be informed of the decision. Thank you very much for all of your time and your questions. Thank you. We will now move to agenda item three, which is where the committee will consider whether to accord recognition to the proposed cross-party group on social enterprise. Do the members have any comments? Are we content to approve the cross-party group then? Yep. yep. Thank you very much. Um, and the committee will now move into private session to consider agenda item four. And once this consideration is complete, the committee will move back into public session.